My name is Anthony Stone of Coach Stone Football, Back to the Basics. I am currently uh, at Rockford Boylan High School, varsity quarterbacks and running backs coach. I'm also a former collegiate and special teams coordinator. Uh, my presentation today is on rugby punting. Uh, hopefully you'll at least take one thing away from this. Uh, the one thing I would say to you is this, if you do not have a long snapper, the best thing I would do is when you do it, snap the ball to the PP, add the PP, flip it back to the punter, and then punt it real fast. Uh, but this, if you do have a really good long snapper that can snap over 10 to 12, 15 yards, uh, the rugby punt could be for you. Uh, before I begin, I want to thank all the coaches that have coached me as a player, coached against me or coached with me. Without, without them, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I want to thank you all. This is a little bit of background about me. Uh, these are all the places I've been at. Uh, there's some overseas places and things like that. The big B you see is Beloy College. That's where I was a special teams coordinator for a couple of years. I have coached uh, for USA football. In 2010, we won a gold medal. Uh, I was a defensive coordinator. We won 201 to zero in three games. Um, and it's still a national team record still to this day. Uh, currently, I am at Rockford Boylan High School. You see that in the top corner. Uh, also, the other thing with my company, my Back to the Basics company, I've recently started my own football coaching accreditation program with Gridiron Australia. Phase one should be out soon with phase two and three uh, ending by next year. I, com I combine my love for teaching and passion for football to create Coach Stone Football in the spring of 2017. Uh, if you want to, you can go to my website, coachstonefootball.com. My purpose, I created my Back to the Basics books and football camps to teach skills and techniques to improve the player confidence through basic drills while having fun. Uh, this year, like I said earlier in the slide before, in 2020, I created the first uh, football coaching accreditation program for Britain and Australia for the whole country of Australia. Um, and the biggest thing I always say is fundamentals. It lays a foundation while utilizing and necessary skills to set to become a better athlete. Last, before we start the rugby stuff, I want to personally thank each coach that is listening here today for making a difference in the lives of your players, both on and off the field. The first tip I want to say is this, and if you want to steal this from me, I'm more than happy to. I think he's going to be a great football coach too, Joe Judge. He's a New York Giants head football coach. Don't tell me they can't do certain things. Tell me what they can do and then figure out as coaches, because that's our job and how we can use that. That's our responsibility. Everyone has something they can do. So what you see on the slide here is this. These are our punting stats from 2010 to 2012. We punted the ball 149 times from those two years. On those, those years, we had 41 punt returns for 341 yards. We averaged 7.6 yards per return out of the 41. 12 punts went over 50 plus yards. It's a pretty good stat for our rugby punt. Here are some examples of our rugby punt. If you notice, we have two by two, three in the back as personal protectors. And if you notice, there's blocking assignments are way different almost on every play. So 
those are some clips from it thing. But one thing I always say, you must win the hidden yardage. It's the battle for field position. The chances of scoring are endless. Uh, this is a little chart that I've gotten through my past and I've modified a little bit. But if you can get that ball landing inside the 30, when you kick that ball off, they have a one of 30 chance to score. Um, if you're that team that is kicking the ball off and they're running it back to the 50 every time, you know, the biggest thing I would say is just, you know, onside kick it, you know, but with a rugby punt and everything, if we can get the ball deeper in their end zone, it helps us out immensely with that category. Benefits I see using a rugby punt is very simple. One, it's more fun to coach and the athletes will like it. Two, you get more skilled players on the field. How many times when you have a punt team, you leave your offensive line out there and then you punt the ball away. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get past your first two guys that are running down there. And then you have your offensive line trying to catch that player. Or sometimes your punter is your bigger guy and he's not athletically. So if you get past them, you're all gone. Number three, makes the practice fly by. Your sessions with this, your like little 10, five minute segments, you'll fly by when you do this with the rugby funding. It makes the other team use more practice time defending this type of punt formation. It's just like when you're doing, you know, if someone does a swing and gave for extra point, the rugby punt makes you weekly do it. And if some coaches are good, they'll start it weeks before they even play you. Returns are limited. If you run it correctly, this rugby punt, the other teams will have to put two people back there at least. But then when you even do that, you'll have more time to do fakes with that. And you'll see that later in the slides. Number six, returners have tendencies to look at the gunners and the snipers. That's what we call them when we ran it. And the biggest thing is, you know, this is a returner. If the returner is looking at the guy in front of them, something's going wrong. It's not good because they're going to muff the ball. Everyone will be want to be a punter because how fun it is and things like that. The biggest thing I would do is do a tryout. You know, if you if you're not in a collegiate sport or you're not in college, try it with them and have a punt competition. Fakes are endless, and you'll see that in here. I didn't put all my fakes in here. A lot of them are in my volume three book. Uh, but the fakes are endless with this. Blocking assignments are super easy. So if you look at this and if you would like a copy, you can always email me and I'll give that to you at the end of the slideshow. It takes pressure away from the long snapper if they are coming. So usually the long snapper has to snap and run down the field really fast. Here, they don't have to do that as much. So they don't have to just snap and go, they can snap and wait. So it puts less pressure on the long snapper, especially if they're coming with a bunch more than you can block. And it helps you create turnovers in many different ways. The ball is going off just any which way. It's either going right, it's going left, it's going straight, it's moving, the ball's turning different ways. You're not able to sometimes catch that ball. If you run a spread offense, this should be your punt. So if you are a 10 personnel team, you have already two by two, those two guys and your backups could be that position. You have to have players that are used to running down the field and blocking. The biggest thing I think that a lot of people with the punt teams don't do, they don't put their five main front wall, usually their guards and their tackles. They don't take them out and put people that are usually there that are used to running down the field. If you're asking an offense or a defensive lineman to run 30 yards down the field, there's something wrong. Either you're scoring every play or your team's getting scored on all the time. Other benefits of using a rugby punt. The punt team won't be boring anymore. <laughs> you know, when we as coaches get to the part where, you know, uh, coach, is the special team's time? Because I'm ready to take a break, you know, uh, and they don't want to do that. They want to be to do special teams. They want to do rugby punting. Another thing, players will actually want to be on the team, like I said earlier. They don't want to just sit there and do nothing or go to another position coach. You actually want to be on the punt team or be on the scout team to try to block the punt. It puts stress on the defense. You'll see, just like you saw earlier with the clips, or I didn't say nothing because I just wanted you to soak it in. Nothing, look, nothing like you maybe seen before, but it just helps where everyone's getting blocked and they're just getting stopped in their tracks one by one. Traditional punt team snap and hope and pray that there's not a big return. With this rugby punt, you should be shutting down the return right off the bat. Rugby teams 
put stress and pressure on the return team, not the other way around. And you know that in a lot of games, if you're if you lose a lot of games by special teams, especially on the punt team or the punt return team, you might want to look more into this punt team. Makes them put more practice time in the special teams that we could practice. Like I said earlier, if you don't try to take a period or two to study what this thing is, you will have more stress coming up on yourself when it's all said and done. Rugby punt teams could fake every time. If you can get it, let's go for it. You know, but I, I tell my guys all the time, don't do it unless you're 1,000% sure you can get it. Here are some other punt formations that you might have seen before or you might even use. Uh, if you see the one where it says spread punt, the traditional one that everyone uses, now you see everyone doing the empty in the other corner. In the middle, you see the double wing punt. You know, that's the old traditional one too. The shield punt, where a lot of teams use now, where they just do that, and then when they open, when they go down the field, they open up like a hand and they run down the field like this. Because if they run down the field like this, it's not good. They want to open up when they run out. And of course, like the 12 personnel punt, the ace punt, that's why I call it the ace punt. Those are all different types of formations that you could use or are using right now. With a rugby punt, you're gonna see something a bit different. The spread punt has four or five skill players. The ace punt has four skill players usually. Double wing has less than four skill players usually. The empty has five to six skill players, but only one line of defense. The shield punt has about six skill players, but are easy to block at high school or lower levels. The rugby punt should have 10 to 11 skill players that are used to running the long distance. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about that stuff and showed you a little taste of the rugby punt, we're actually gonna show you the alignments and the blocking assignments. Again, if you have any questions or you need anything, you can just contact me at coachstoneusa at gmail.com and I'll give you that later on too. Okay, alignment and splits. The biggest thing you to understand is this. When you do this, if you do the exact alignment that's here, it'll help you to get your spot correct, okay? So you don't have no seepage coming through when they're coming at you. The snappers and the guards are six inches from the shoulder pad. So the ball goes down, the two guards will be six inches from the shoulder pad. That means six inches, the head will be to the shoulder pad, okay? So they're pretty close together. I know the picture says it shows a wider, but you wanna be six inches. Wings are off the ball. They are the ones in the back, the left personal protector and the right personal protector. There's seven yards, they will split the outside leg of the guard. The PP, the personal protector, will be off the ball to the right wing side. They'll be on the right wing side to start. And they will swing to behind seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. The punter will be off 13 and a half yards usually behind the long snapper. The front three stances, okay? The front three, their stance to be long snapper and the guards, There'll be a balanced stance, feet under shoulders, helmet must break the belt buckle, okay? So those guards, if your center's here and the belt buckle's right here, their head's right here. So they gotta break the shoulder pad. So their head is with that, their head is, the, uh, their head is with the shoulder pad of the center. But then you gotta remember the guards, their belt buckle is there, okay? Hands on the thigh boards, eyes on the ball. Okay, protection and count system. Man protection is huge, okay? Each man is responsible for his assignment, rusher, according to the count. The count system is away from the overload. So if they have three on this side and four on this side, we're counting away from the overload side. That means we're going to count here first. Count the rushers from outside working in. So if there's three and four, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Include the count, include in the count. On the line, rush threats. Backers within three yards. So they gotta be within three yards of the line of scrimmage for you to count them. Not included in the count. Very simple. Extended rushers, the ones that do contain. Those are the ones that are further away from the ball and they cannot get there in time. Backers that are three yards or deeper will also not be able to get from there because they'll be over 16 yards away from the snap. 
zero. Verse an unbalanced look, count to the higher number and send the long snapper that way. Verse unbalanced look, count to the higher number and then send the long snapper that way. Okay, so here what we have is this, very simple, okay? So one, the top picture where it says left to right, we're counting one, two, three, down the middle then, right down the middle, we have number four, five, six. If you look on the picture where it says right to left, we're blend blocking one, two, five, six. Now we should flip that, but there's a reason why we do that later on. I can tell you if you want to get an email from that. And then what we got here is we go right to left. It is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. The protection count system is pretty simple. And what you see now is the same pictures. Like you said earlier, the only difference now is telling you the wings. So if you look at the bottom of the thing where it says wings to the number one side, that means the left wing where it says left to right, that left wing where it says left P would go and block the one. Okay. The guard to the left to right would block the number two guy. The long snapper and the PP would grab the number three guy. The long snapper must chase if there's an A gap loop. Okay. The PP and the, L, the left and right personal protector will stay on their man versa twist. Okay. And that six guy coming across, he won't get there in time because if we're going left to right, we're actually rugby punting that ball to the left. Communication and cadence. Okay. On the field, the PP will count away from the threat, left to right, right to left. The snapper direction, right to left, right or left. So the snapper will get, they will give the snapper a directional call. Easy way to count it is very simple. Use, let the PP recount or even versus a stem. So if teams are running back and forth on you, the easy way to do it is just recount it versus a stem team all the time. When you say set, no one can move. So once you say set, no one can move. Now, if the long snapper is worried which way he's going left or right, he can just say check, check, or he can, you know, tap the guy because he's only holding the ball with the hand and tap, tap the guy. And then once he gets his both hands on there, boom, he's good to go. The PP can move from the left side or the right side, wherever he wants to do to make his block easier. Okay, guard protection. Guard and long snapper protection technique. It is a man scheme that allows us to be aggressive and physical with a rush team. The inside three protects protection mindset is very simple. You want to stop the vertical charge by a head up or inside rusher. So it looks like if you see on the screen where it says, what is a redirect? We want to make sure we are redirecting them out, not in where they can just come around the corner technique versus an inside head up or tight outside shade, protect the inside gap, cover up the rusher, run your feet, a technique versus a wide rusher, vertical set, keeping the inside relation to the rusher, keep square though, as long as possible. So you want to keep square as long as possible. Attack the inside with your outside hand, then punch with an inside hand. Run your feet physically, redirect the rusher just like you see what kind of redirection you want. You do not want the two yards and they're already by you. You want the two yards where you push them and they still have to go out, not around. Okay. We must be physical with those two yards with that path. On the bottom where it says shield protection technique, the PP and the wings mindset is very simple. Okay. You're going to be patient back there. A lot of people, if you see this on film and you see the PP here, the ball snapped, and then all of a sudden the PP is backing up. And what I'm going to tell you too is this. If you're going after that punt team, just push them into the punter. It'll work every time. And some of you probably already know that. Do not chase. Protect the kick point. The kick point is very simple. We'll talk about that in a second. Make them go inside. So when you're doing it, you're trying to throw them inside because what you're trying to do is when you rugby punt, you're rugby in this way. Or you're rugby in this way. You're not rugby in straight ahead. 
versus an overload, you'll get help from the personal protector. And you'll see why, because if they overload one side, you're going away with that. The wing technique, keep inside foot nailed into the grass, attack with the numbers, a short jab step, do not let them cross face you, okay? Versus a jumper, it's just like an offensive line. Once you do that, punch them, and get the, you'll punch them right in the gut, and their hands will go down. The PP, very simple. Stay square on the inside rush, cover them up, versus overload, eyes to the side, step patient, and block threat that comes to you. Do not chase them. You're not a chaser. You're letting them come to you and you're not retreating at all. You're just standing aground like a wall. Communication and cadence, like we talked about from the sideline, will give a formation. We'll give the kick direction, which we wanna go. You can use the numbers you see here, eight to kick to the right, seven to kick to the left, and zero to kick up the middle. And what that does is tells everyone on the sideline, so once the ball's kicked, where we're all going. In a two by two alignment, I, I put up here the landmarks for you if you do wanna attempt this. Spread middle of the field. Gunners are on the numbers. Snipers split the difference between the gunner and the guard. So they might be, they're just gonna be in between. Just split the difference. And everyone knows how to split the difference because every coach talks about it. On the hash, what you see below is boundary gunner will split the numbers in the sideline the field gunner will be the top of the numbers, okay? The snipers split the difference again. In a three by one alignment, I don't have that drawn. Um, what it is, is we call it the bucks left or right. And then it would be field gunner to the bottom of the numbers. The middle sniper would split the numbers in the hash. The inside sniper would be on the inside hash and the boundary would be on top of the numbers. Now, what do snipers and gunners mean? Okay, it's very simple. These are your two guys on the outside that you saw. And on the video, when I wasn't talking and all, you're probably like, why is he just showing us the video? Because I'd rather show it to you than try to explain it all at once. And now that you've seen the video, you're gonna wanna go back and look at it again. And then we got more clips for you coming up to see how it all pans out when you put it all together as one. The snipers are very simple, okay? You are the ball players. You be aggressive and you take a shot. You attack the ball with spill mentality. Always make, make it to the football. Go sideways if you do not make a play. So if you don't make a play, you want to make that ball go one way or the other. The gunners are the squeeze players. If the returner is spilled like they should be if they don't get tackled, then what will happen is you will make the play immediately. A general aiming point is to keep the ball two yards off your inside shoulder, inside shoulder. If you are in this position, you're gonna make plays. You wanna play fast and you wanna play aggressive. Rugby punt rules, very simple, okay? A line directly behind the snapper, 13 and a half to 14 yards, okay? So you gotta find a long snapper that can snap that. Secure the snap, grab it, make sure right away. You have three steps on the kick. Do not hold on to the ball longer than that. If you do, you're asking for trouble. Number four, the aiming point is between numbers and the sidelines. If you aim that way to the numbers and sidelines, the ball will definitely bounce out of bounds or you're painting your returner in the corner. And number five, you are the last line defense. So hypothetically speaking, if the gunners and the snipers and the guards and the wings all mess up, you're the last line of defense. So you wanna make sure you have someone athletic back there to make sure they pull them down. Rugby punt allows us to move the kick point of the punt. At the same time, it gives the jet team another blocking scheme to prepare for. Our cover team has a better chance to create turnovers from a muff football. We can rugby punt from any formation, okay? and have the ability to check out of it depending on what the situation is. Another protection scheme. Okay, play side guard, blocks number three. Long snapper, blocks four or three to that side. The play side, backside guard blocks two. Play side wing blocks outside man, outside of number one. 
the PP blocks number two, and the backside wing just shuffles. Front side to look for an inside leak, no threat wheel. Backside is security edge. Some of the other ways you can align your punt, and here's the trips one like I talked about, and you saw the bucks we talked about earlier too, but there's a trips one here, and then a bucks one. Okay, here are more examples with different clips of us kicking the ball off in the rugby punt. You see, there's four guys going down to one returner. I don't know about you, but if I was a returner, I would not be happy. And also, if you look how many players are down there right now. Same clip from the tight view. So now they're only rushing two guys here. So they think, okay, we'll just put more returners back there. And look how many of those players are right there for us. Now they want to bring the house. And if you notice, they had stacked returners there, one and top one and one. Put a guy in motion. Just get it off. There he spills it to sideways. And now look how many guys are to the ball. Five guys, that one linebacker in the middle, we don't count. And he muffed it because he was looking at the ball. Now they got two returners if you see here. So he's gonna try to grab it at number three. Other tips and tricks, make sure you pre-practice or practice. Uh, I'll show you my uh, personnel protectors and different alignments on the next slide. We tell our punters if we call green, then they see green, they know what they need to get to the first down, they should go for it if they don't punt the football. Must practice if you have a first year, if you're first year at the punter and doing, if you have a punter doing this the first year, you wanna make sure before they do the green call, that they're fast enough to get there. Fakes are unlimited, and those are the clips coming up. You can also have a Rambo punt. That's a fourth and short where you have, if, they're, if your snipers and gunners are already your receivers, then come out there, and then you can just punt that thing off with your fourth and short team. All right, here's an example of what we did on a Tuesday. Uh, I know it's a little cut off at the stadium view and stuff, but the stadium was where it says S-T-A-D, and this was behind the stadium. What we'd have is our punt returners were our coaches that were a part of the, the staff at the time, and that's what we'd work on. We'd work on the snipers and gunner releases. DBs and receivers would scout, and they would hold them up to work on releases. Uh, long snappers would be with the interior front line scheme, and then what we'd do is just make a bunch of different ways that people could come at us, and then we do a little competition for that. Here are examples of our fake clips. And these are really cool. So if you notice here, we're totally, I didn't show you where we started out. We started out normal with three personal protectors. We said ready, and then we shifted. The, got the, one, the right wing went to the three by one and number three, and the left wing went and been to the line of scrimmage as a tight end. Well, he's not really a tight end, he'd be a left tackle here, I'm sorry. All it is is a flood route. Remember, our punt team is way different than our offense. Here's the back view. Here's the shift, like I told you. And all it is is everyone block the next man. Same type of play, but we just changed it up. Watch this. Now we hit the short guy. Boom, right there.
There's green. There's another one from a different view. We just changed it up and had them come run a hitch because everybody knew we were flooding out, so we ran a hitch there. Okay, so we talked about green, okay? So right here, it's, what is it, fourth and like, let's say five, right? Now, if you look at how many are on the line, so we have on the top, look at the corner on top of the screen, okay? He's right between the numbers and the hash. He is looking at that wide receiver. So he is running with him no matter what. We know that, right? We saw that on film. And now if you look at it here, we have less on this on the top of the screen. We have one is cover number two. We have on the line one, two, and three. So we have three guys. If we run green here, we have the right guard taking somebody. And the next three guys... We have all man on man. There's nobody on the punter. So if you do this right, and one guy goes inside, or they twist here, and like we, they did against us, they did the weeks before or last year on us, because this is our new field. So all we did was we called green, and watch what happens. Boom. Look at that guy. That guy's returning. So they really only sent one guy after us. They had a set return, nothing. They didn't wait. So let's go back and play that again. So the guy that's on the screen in that like sprinter stance, he backs off. Our punter sees it because he's supposed to punt it here, but he gets that green, he gets, he looks at the green call for my head coach and boom, he takes it. There it is. Look at that, he lets him go inside like he's taught the personal protector. That's the wing and he gets him. Uh, so if you have any questions, I wanna thank everyone for listening to the rugby punt. I know it was short and sweet. I hope you learned something. Uh, these are some football resources I highly recommend if you visit my website, Coach Stone Football, to direct links uh, to these amazing football resources. I firmly believe in each one of these companies uh, on the list of my websites. I believe that you can help every team with an organization with uh, more ways than one. Be sure to look at their promo codes and things like that. Um, Dragonfly, for example, athletes, uh, that's a good free site for coaches. I would definitely look into that but there's a lot of great programs there. Here are my back to the basics books. Uh, my tackle books are on the left side. The green book is over 582 pages, uh, volume. Uh, it has everything from the green book has offense, defense, special teams, tackling and turnovers. And then what I did was I couldn't make the book any bigger. So I then built a volume one offense with new drills and tips, volume two defense with new drills and tips, volume three, new drills and tips, volume four, new drills and tips, and then volume five, the coaching edition. Um, they are very, really good tackle books. Uh, number, the green book and the volume three have won numerous awards for being, you know, given credit to, I think from all the coaches that helped me become the best coach I can be. I also have the largest flag book ever. Um, and I have a tackle bar book. If you guys look in the tackle bar, I have a clinic notebook for any glazier or zooms. I know coach has one. Uh, there's also a junior edition for those little kid books. And then if you have a mom's edition, uh, it's really good. It's a, it's a smaller book than all the other ones. They're only available on Amazon. And then the cool thing is every book is included with bonus content. As long as you send a picture of the books or do, oh, I should say, and do a review. So that's my thing. I want to thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can email me at coachstoneusa at gmail.com. My website is coachstonefootball.com. Twitter is coach underscore stone underscore MT. And then that's my Facebook. But I want to thank you guys very much.